A program where you have progressive action, so all residents can have access, barrier-free, non-discrimination, no discrimination on the basis of one's age, one's gender, one's location, one's insurance status. One. And so the whole matter of avoiding the burden on the poor. I've worked in countries in the Caribbean and then they that speaking, an English speaking Caribbean, where sometimes you get a prescription and you go to the pharmacy and you ask, well, what is the cost of these items? In Jamaica, one individual came to me and said, I went to the pharmacy. They gave me the cost of the prescription items. There were two items. One was 30 tablets, the next one was 60 tablets. And when I was told the cost, I asked for one. And the pharmacist wanted to know one of what? One of the uh, prescribed items? said, no, I want one tablet. One tablet. That's all I could have afforded. Persons who have been prescribed also to do diagnostic tests, do surgery, and so because they don't have the resources, have to postpone it. Have to delay seeking care or have to seek other resources. They have to sell their property, uh, borrow. They have to depend on the church, for example, for special collections to support their, their means. So you want to avoid as much, as much as possible what we call this total burden of financial burden on individuals. But it's not just a matter of the curative side or the personal care, it's also the community care. And this is where the whole matter of all of government, education, finance, agriculture, trade policies, uh, nutrition policies, all of these become linked together if we want to get the kind of action we need on the social determinants, what's uh, happening to us with respect to chronic diseases, infectious diseases, violence and accidents, mental health, which Dr. Cumberbatch uh, defined. My second slide is really, as I said, my fam the famous cube, looking at three dimensions. How much of the cube are you filling? If you only fill a small portion of the cube, then it means that there are gaps. Who is covered? Does everyone have barrier-free access? Maybe not. Then who is not covered becomes part of the charge. What package of services are you covering? And it's not just having a package of services, it's guaranteeing availability and timeliness. You can't say you have X or Y in the package and it's not available. You can't say these medications are on a list and when people show up, there's a shortage. You can't say the surgical operation has been uh, offered in the package, but when you show up, well, the specialist is not coming from abroad for the next three months. Availability, guarantee, timeliness becomes very crucial in this. And the third dimension is what we really call the whole financing arrangement. If you can only cover part of what you generally need, and you have gaps in paying for the rest, then you have a major gap. The whole purpose of what we want to do in making the transition from the MBS to an NHI, your full coverage NHI, is to fill the gaps. Who is not covered by MBS? How do we bring them on board? What services are not covered? Can we get that on board? How do we pay for all of these and the gaps in coverage? How do we bring that into the picture? That's the cube we're trying to fill, and that's my shorthand of the scope of work that will be engaged in in providing the technical evidence.